Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming to the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs Mini Backpack. All right, so grab a coffee, grab a tea, let's start your workouts, go to work, let's do laundry, whatever that you're doing, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today, starting with the first question from Flavia Frida's Alvis. Hopefully I said that correctly. Lately, I've been avoiding the Louis Vuitton monogram bags I have. It feels like they are the same bag just because of the monogram canvas. I'm a little tired of the monogram, I guess. Don't you ever feel like you are using the same bag because of the pattern of canvas? This is a fabulous, fabulous question, and I completely understand where you're coming from. However, I feel that even though bags might have the same type of canvas print, the silhouette also brings a lot to the table. It also brings a lot to that outfit, so that way the bags are completely different worlds apart. You know, I kind of view it the same way that I view uh, all three canvas prints, because I think that Damien Azor adds a type of freshness. It adds a really nice pop to your outfit, just like Damia Ben has that really great uh, carefree element to it. So I view it the same way, you know? So if you do have a monogram, uh, for example, the Palm Springs Mini, or whenever I'm carrying my monogram Neverfull, they might have the same type of print, but I feel that they are wor worlds apart, and it gives my outfit a completely different look, you know? I don't know. That's the way that I see it. I would love to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think? If anything, this is kind of like a side note, I really wish that Louis Vuitton would incorporate more of their design in other prints besides monogram. I mean, I love monogram. I think it is absolutely beautiful. Out of the three canvas prints, my favorite is Damia Ben. You know, that red always ends up getting me, and plus the fact that it is so carefree is an aspect that I absolutely appreciate about it, but I don't see as many bags in Damia Ben, and you don't see as many bags in Damia Azur. You mostly see them in monogram, you know? Anytime you have a lot of these new styles, it's always in monogram, and then maybe later on, if it ends up being a little bit more popular, they start to incorporate it in the other two prints. So if anything, like I said, I really wish that Louis Vuitton would uh, would add more styles, more designs with the other two prints. But back to what I was saying, I think that if someone has a collection of only monogram bags, because they have different styles and different silhouettes, they each bring something different to an outfit or they each bring something different to the collection. So I don't feel that they are too similar or that you're essentially carrying the same bag. But again, those are just my two cents and I would love to hear what you guys think. Do you feel that sometimes you are carrying the same bag over and over again or do you feel that the silhouette offers a little bit of a difference a little bit of variety to your outfit or whatever the case may be let us know in the comment section down below but fantastic question and hopefully i was able to answer it next question from candace nr can you give an update on the wear and tear of your Longchamp Large Le Pliage? Have you been using it instead of the Neverfull? I bought one this weekend and I'm very curious as to your thoughts on it since it did make your most used bags of 2018. Well, first and foremost, major congratulations on your Longchamp. I did bring one of mine out so we have a little bit more eye candy. This is in the size large and in the color khaki. Now, as far as wear and tear goes, let me tell you. I have put this bag to the test. I have put it through the ringer, and this bag has seen some things. Oh yeah, it's definitely seen some things, you know? And do I use it instead of my Neverfull? Sometimes. Sometimes I use it in addition to my Neverfull because you guys know I am a pack rat, I am a hoarder. Sometimes I need to carry absolutely everything with me. And to be completely honest with you, this bag has been the bag behind the scenes, if that makes any sense. So regardless of the bag that I'm using, whether it's a Palm Springs Mini, or if I'm using a Saint Laurent or a Celine or any other bag that I have, if I need to go run errands, I will always have this bag with me in my car. You know, I have another one, so sometimes I do end up trading them out, but the khaki definitely speaks to me, and the khaki has definitely held up uh, a lot more than I anticipated. You know, I am just crazy, crazy about this bag. It has paid for itself hundreds of times over. I know that that might seem a little dramatic, um, but I just, I think it is absolutely fantastic. As far as any types of, uh, any signs of wear, uh, you might be able to see the wear along the bottom because I do not baby this bag. It doesn't matter the type of weather that we're having. I will put it down on the ground. I will put it down, I mean, wherever. You know, sometimes I use this as my um, as my supermarket bag and I throw all of my stuff in there and I'm lugging it around. So like I said, I am not nice to it. And you can see a little bit of wear along the bottom as far as some stains. Nothing too bad. I haven't had any major rips or anything like that. Uh, on the corners, I do have some fraying. Let me see if I can um, 
give me a second. I do have some fraying along, along the corners there. I have some fraying there and a little bit there, not too bad. I mean, considering how much I use this bag and I mean, how often I use it, I would think that it would have a lot, a lot more wear and tear and it doesn't. So it is held up insanely well for what I put it through, poor bag. But um, I highly, highly recommend the Longchamps. I think that they make, or the Le Pliage line, I think that they make awesome travel bags, awesome everyday bags, awesome gym bags, you name it. I mean, I think that this material holds up uh, insanely well. And I also like the fact that you do have this carefree leather. You don't have to worry about any types of water stains or anything like that. So I do have some fraying, like I said before, along the corners, nothing too bad. I have some staining just from setting it down. But all in all, I mean, I think this bag looks pretty good. It looks a little bit wrinkled just because, again, I'm not, I'm not too nice to it, <laughs> but um, I just, I think that these bags are awesome. And as far as a large one goes, this is definitely my favorite just because I can put it on my shoulder, you know, in addition to the other bags that I'm carrying or whatever else I have within my hands. It lets, it gives me the option to be hands-free, which I appreciate. And I also don't find the handles to roll off of my shoulder. Sometimes they do not too often. I just want to throw that out there because that might be a deal breaker for some of you. Uh, but in general, Longchamps, definitely. These, these guys can be put to the test and then some, and I still think that they end up holding up very, very well. So uh, that's my uh, my wear and tear. Uh, between uh, the, uh, the other Longchamp that I have, the khaki is the one that I end up using the most. Um, the other one is like a charcoal gray. And sometimes I use it, to be honest, sometimes I... Um, I kind of uh, put it on the back burner just because I'm crazy about the khaki color, but uh, I really want to add more Longchamps into my collection. I have been looking at like a baby pink or a red or even their their leather line um, in general. I mean, I'm just, I'm a big, big fan of Longchamp, but as far as the Le Pliage line goes, highly, highly, highly recommend it. And it can definitely withstand um, <laughs> some not so nice care, if you will, or lack thereof from their owners, but highly, highly recommend it. And I really hope that you like it as much as I do. But great question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Vicki Thompson. What are your thoughts on the Coach Tabby bag? I've been doing some research. All right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of the Coach Tabby bag right now. I'm a big, big fan of the Tabby lineup, and I love the fact that you have a variety of different colors and different sizes to choose from. You're not just limited to one, and it is an older design that they revamped, and I think that the details that they incorporated make it that much more user-friendly. Now, in the past, you guys have heard me talk about wanting to add another coach bag into my collection, and I sincerely thought it was going to be the Parker, but after going into the stores when I was trying to find these Wizard of Oz pieces, I really found myself gravitating towards the Tabby, especially the Tabby 26. I absolutely love this bag. I like the shape that it has. I like the size that it has. I believe that it measures 10 inches in length, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not too big. It's not too small. It ends up fitting all of my daily essentials with ease. I also like the fact that it has the uh, it has quite a few slip pockets. So that way it adds a little bit more organization to your bag and you're not left with just this, you know, enormous, um, enormous black hole, if you will, where you end up throwing all your stuff in there and it makes it a little bit harder to find if you don't have a purse organizer or anything like that. So I definitely appreciate the slip pockets. But what I sincerely love the most about this bag is the fact that it comes with two. It comes with two detachable straps. So that way, if you wanted to use it as a shorter shoulder bag, you have that option. Or if you wanted to use it crossbody or as a longer bag on your shoulder, you have that option as well. So I think that it offers so incredibly much. And let's not forget the awesome price point that these bags have. I believe uh, the one that I was looking at retails for $350 if I'm not mistaken. And I do believe that the tabbies go up to $4.95, if not $5.50, somewhere around there. You also have the option if you wanted to customize them by adding a different type of hardware. I mean, I am just, I am absolutely in love with this bag. And uh, like I said, I've been going into the boutiques quite a bit and I ended up taking all of my items in there just to see how it ended up working out. I like where it lands on my body frame. And I, like I said before, I think that this bag offers so incredibly much and it has an awesome, awesome price point. You know, and I've said it before that when it comes to Coach, they have definitely revamped their brand and they have started to introduce a lot more details 
that I think make it very user friendly, you know, so that way, again, you're not limited to just one option of being able to carry a bag. You have, uh, you know, I mean, you have a variety of different ways to carry a bag and be able to incorporate it into your daily lifestyle. So I'm a big, big fan of the Tabby 26 or just the Tabby lineup, the silhouette in general. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this bag. If you guys do have it, let us know in the comment section down below, or if you're also eyeing it, let me know that as well. But fabulous question. And if you decide to go for the tabby whichever size you decide to go for congratulations on your soon-to-be bag but great question and hopefully I was able to answer it next question from Sarah Berg hopefully I said that correctly since you recommended the YSL card holder vastly over Chanel for durability does that extend to handbags for you I'm close to buying my first Chanel but they are very expensive bags and if YSL is better quality maybe I should get a YSL one instead we have none in our area, so I can't walk in and try any on. This is an awesome, awesome question, and I did bring out two bags, so we have a little bit more eye candy. This is the Saint Laurent Kate in the size medium and the color earth gray, and here is the Chanel medium large classic flap and the black caviar with the silver hardware and here they are side by side i absolutely love both fashion houses i think both of them have uh, so many beautiful handbags to choose from now kind of like what i mentioned in last week's video i definitely feel in my experience that the saint laurent pebbled leather holds up a lot better than the chanel caviar leather i'm not saying i don't like the caviar leather i absolutely love it and it does end up aging very well but between the two this one can definitely withstand a lot more uh, a lot more wear than this one can, you know, but again, that's just my experience. Now, I also wanted to say a huge thank you to me likey too for pointing something out that I also agree with because when it comes to handbags, I do like Saint Laurent, but I prefer Chanel. And the main reason that is, is because with Saint Laurent, for the most part, many of their handbags, as well as their small other goods, do end up having varnish on the sides. Now the varnish is great, but at the same time, it's something that you have to keep in, in the back of your mind that might end up cracking as time goes by. So if you have a type of bag like the Kate that you end up opening up this way, it ends up putting a little bit more stress on this side. So you might end up experiencing that type of cracking as time goes by. Whereas with the Chanel, you don't have, for the most part, you don't have any type of varnish. It's mostly stitched. So with this one, you do have to worry about the pop stitches, but not as much as the varnish. You know, and it kind of reminds me of the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse because I love that bag, but many people experience the uh, the varnish end up cr that ends up cracking on the sides because of how you end up opening that bag. So again, that's just something to know. That's just something to put in the back of your mind. But between the two. So with this one, as far as the classic flaps go, you just have stitching and with the Kate, uh, you do have that varnish along the sides. I also wanted to point out that I did have the Saint Laurent clutch in the black pebble leather and the gold hardware many, many years ago, and I loved it, and I didn't experience any type of cracking along uh, this side here. But at the same time, I didn't use that clutch as much as I do, you know, some of the other handbags that I have within my collection. So I couldn't really say that, well, I didn't have any problems with it because I only used it for a certain amount of time. You know, it's not like something that I incorporated into my daily lifestyle or anything like that. But uh, I do like Saint Laurent, you know, but again, that varnish might be a deal breaker for some, especially if it does have the type of style that you constantly have to open and close that might end up causing some type of stress on this. Uh, and another thing to point out is that Saint Laurent, as beautiful as they are, they don't end up holding their resale value as well as Chanel does. Of course, there's a huge difference between the two. Uh, but with this one, let's say that you end up going for it. Let's say you get sick of it within a year or two years time. You'd be able to get more of your money with this one than you would with this one because the resale value on these goes down drastically. Like I said before, both of these fashion houses are incredible and they have so many different handbags to choose from. And even though I'm a huge fan of the Saint Laurent Pebble Leather and I think that it wears fabulously as time goes by, when it comes to handbags, I do prefer the Chanel just because with Saint Laurent, as far as the styles that I like, they do end up having that uh, that varnish and that varnish makes me a little bit nervous. But like I said in the reveal video of this bag, I will definitely let you know if I have any issues with this varnish that ends up cracking or anything like that. I will definitely put that in my uh, in my review. But uh, with the Chanel ones, like I said before, you don't have any varnish. You just have that beautiful stitching along the sides plus the resale value. So it's a matter of personal preference and hopefully this was able to help. I'm really excited for whichever one you decide to go for. But great question and hopefully I was able to answer it.
Next question from Angel Morano. Hopefully I said that correctly. What do you think about Virgil's mini soft trunk in the monogram eclipse? Do you think it's worth the hefty price? All right, before I get any further, let me insert a picture of this bag right now. Out of all of the soft trunks that this fashion house offers, this is hands down by far my favorite. And it could be because of the monogram eclipse. And as many of you know, I'm kind of a sucker for that print. There's something about it. But I just love, love, love this bag. I think it is insanely, insanely gorgeous. And I love the fact that they incorporated the matte black hardware just because it gives it that much more edginess. You know, it kind of gives it that whole Billy badass vibe that I am absolutely digging, you know. And I also like the fact that it doesn't have any major contrasting colors. It's, it doesn't have like this neon yellow, this neon blue or pink. I just feel that it lets the bag kind of do its own, do its own type of speaking. You know what I'm saying? So I, I appreciate it. I love the details. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. And because it is the soft trunk, it is that much more lightweight and you don't necessarily have to worry that it's going to be digging into your skin or anything like that. So the fact that you can use it as a shoulder bag or you can use it as a clutch gives it a little bit more, um, gives it a little bit more variety. And yes, it does have a pretty price point. And as far as it being worth it, I've said it before that it really comes down to the person. It's all a matter of personal preference because if someone really likes a bag, if it speaks to them, if they see themselves using the bag, then I think that it's worth it, you know? But for me personally, there is one detail that I'm not too keen on for the price that this bag has, and that's the fact that the chain is made out of resin. Now I know that the resin adds to how lightweight the bag is, which I can appreciate, but for that price point, I don't wanna see any resin. I would have preferred the handle or the strap to be metal or to have it be all leather so it can warrant that price point. But again, that's how I see it. Someone might see it completely different and that's totally fine because it's all a matter of personal preference. you know. But I'm not trying to take away anything from the bag. I just, I think it is insanely, insanely beautiful. You know, it has that uniqueness. It has that major, major type of, um, you know, edginess to it. It has a whole lot of attitude but it's not too much. It's not too in your face, which I absolutely love, you know, but some of the details I'm just not too crazy on for, for it for myself anyways. But I think it is still just, nonetheless, it is still a, an insanely stunning, stunning bag. So if it speaks to you, absolutely go for it. But fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Karen. What are your thoughts on the mini boîte chapeau? I know it's a tiny bag, but it looks like such a fabulous bag to own as a Louis Vuitton lover. I'm thinking about getting it in the reverse monogram and would love to hear your thoughts on it. All right, so before I get any further, let me insert a picture of this beautiful bag right now. I absolutely love the mini boîte chapeau. And to be honest, I love the silhouette and any size that they have it available. There's just something about it. Now, as far as the mini one, I love the fact that it has so much versatility because it does come with a removable, adjustable strap. So that way you can use it on your shoulder. You can use it cross body. It also has a belt loop. So that way you can use it as a belt bag, a waist bag, a bum bag, what have you, you know? So I think that it has so much to offer, especially for that price point And the fact that you can incorporate it into various aspects of your life I think is wonderful. I love the details that it has. Some people might think that it might be a little too busy, but I think it's busy in just the right areas, you know? And I mean, the fact that it is the reverse monogram as far as the one that you're looking at, you know, I wasn't always the biggest fan of reverse. It's definitely grown on me and I appreciate it so much more because it is so carefree. You know, the fact that you can use it in any type of weather, I think is fantastic, you know, and not to mention that it does have, you know, it has that, that spin on the monogram canvas that I think makes it very unique uh, just because you don't see it as much as, you know, regular monogram. So I am a big, big, big fan of this bag. Yes, it's small, but it packs a punch. You know, you definitely do have to go for your comp pack small leather goods, but I think it is absolutely beautiful. So if you love it, if you see yourself using it, if this is something that you want to add to your collection, you said it perfectly. If you are a Louis Vuitton lover, if you want to add a little bit more variety to your collection, I think that this is a fantastic, fantastic bag to go for, you know? So I think, I think it's beautiful, you know? And I'm really curious for those of you that do have this bag, or if you do have the larger one, let us know in the comment section down below how you find it. Is there something to look out for? The more information that we have, the better. But again, if you see yourself using it, if you love it, absolutely go for it because the boîte chapeau or the mini boîte chapeau, I mean, it just, 
there's there's something about it for me anyways <laughs> there's something about it it brings such a smile to my face every time that i see it you know just the details and everything that it has going on i am definitely a huge huge fan of but great question and hopefully i was able to help and the last question from renee g do you see hobos coming back in style soon we've had structured and mini bags for some time now but i love massive shapeless hobos um i do i definitely do and i feel that we've already started to see some fashion houses start to reintroduce the hobo back into their collections so i think that within six months to a year's time um we'll we're going to be seeing a lot more fashion houses, if not all of them, with either some of the hobos that they had from their archives or, you know, just with their spin on this type of silhouette. So there's a really good chance that 2020 will be the year of the hobo, you know, and kind of like what you said, with mini bags, a lot of people thought that they were only going to be around for like a season or two. Obviously, that hasn't been the case. They've been around for years now, and you even see some fashion houses start to introduce even smaller bags. You know, now you don't have minis, you have micro minis or micro nano nanos or whatever you want to call them. And with structured bags, I feel like those are always around. But sometimes I think that with uh, with hobos, uh, it can kind of be viewed either as either a bum bag or animal print. Again, they're always there, but I think that in terms of popularity, sometimes they do have that kind of wave effect. They're really popular this year. It kind of dies down and then it comes back with a major major boom So like I said before, I think that there's a really good chance that 2020 might be the year For the silhouette who knows, you know only time will tell but I'm very curious if that does end up happening Which uh, which fashion house ends up getting the it bag the it hobo of the year or what have you so who knows But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. What do you think? Do you think that hobos are going to make a major major comeback? Or do you see a different silhouette making a major comeback for 2020? Let us know in the comment section down below. But great question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Before I let you guys go, I also wanted to do a follow-up question that I got on last week's video, and that was in reference to LVMH purchasing Tiffany & Co. But Rogue Ninja Chef asks, what kind of changes do you think they will implement to attract millennials? I personally feel that they're going to implement the same type of marketing tactics that they did with the Louis Vuitton multi-pochette. I think that they're going to put it in the hands of influencers and they're going to be able to generate those sales and make it larger than life. You know, at least that's the way that I see it. I also feel that they might end up having... Um, a bigger social media presence. Yes, they're on social media, but not to the point of some of these other brands. So I think that that's a direction that they might end up moving in as well. But only time will tell. And kind of like what I talked about last week, I'm really curious to see how they end up generating those sales or how they decide to, you know, to push uh, this brand. Um, but I really, I sincerely feel that it'll go back to influencers. They'll they'll create this buzz. They'll be able to push those sales and they'll be able to, you know, have their audiences interested in a brand that has been, I mean, has been around for a long, long time and that will maybe put them back on top to where they were before. But again, only time will tell, but those are just my two cents. I would love to hear what you guys think. How do you think LVMH is going to uh, put Tiffany & Co. back on top? What do you see them doing as far as marketing? or anything like that, let us know in the comments section down below. But great question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys, that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. I am still nasally, I think. It doesn't sound, it doesn't sound the best, and I feel, like, I feel like I'm having a hard time talking, so hopefully it wasn't too, too bad. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.